Welcome to AP Chemistry at Hananiya High School. I'm Brian Brown, and on this short movie, what we'll be looking at is the syllabus and the resources that are available to you and how you use them. So the first thing I really want to do is make you familiar with uh, the class itself, just a few things about grading and so forth. So we're going to take a quick look at the syllabus for the class. Now, AP and many of you have had AP classes before. Um, AP really is designed to be the equivalent of first year general chemistry. And we actually have a couple of dual purposes here. As an AP class, one of my major responsibilities is to the best of my ability, prepare you for the AP test, which is on that first Monday when we get to Maya of the AP. So AP Chem is always the very first Monday. So that's one thing I have to do is help prepare as many of you as possible to get ready for that test. And the second component of this, and in many ways it's even more important than the first component, is to give you a good experience and background in a college chemistry class. So that if you end up going to college and taking chemistry, even if you found this class challenging and struggled to a C, you'll still find that first year chemistry after having had this class should be an easy A for most of you. So, and that's in some ways more important than preparing you for the test is the experience you get in chemistry. Now, one of the things I want to key in on first here is grading scale. It's a 90, 80, 70, 60 scale. I do round up at the half. If you take a look at your quarter grades, 15% would be homework and quiz. So it's a relatively small component. Um, with how I handle homework, you should be able to maximize that. And that part of your grade should almost always be close to 100%. 25% will be labs. Once again, labs are things that uh, you have an opportunity to try and maximize the points. Not quite as much as homework, but labs are always due several days after we finish, so if you need help, you've got the time to get it. And the single biggest component of your grade, and this is what you have to watch out for, is the test average. 60% of your overall grade is going to be determined by test. So honestly, if you're looking to get an A in this class, and I hope that's what all of you are aspiring to, you really need to have your test average in the, you know, 87% and above is kind of your target range. If you're having trouble reaching that goal, that's where you need to come and get help and talk to me about the resources. What can we do to help get you there? Because my goal would be to get as many as you of you as possible into that A range. So this is a huge component of your grade. If you look at the semester breakdown, it's 40, 40, 20, which is pretty standard. And that's first semester. But second semester, because of the unique um, challenges that the AP test bring about, we really need to wrap up and finish as soon as possible. So second semester, most of our core work is done in third quarter. We wrap up the end material as quickly as possible in fourth quarter, and then we get into review mode for the AP test as well as for the AP final for those of you taking it. So because of that, I do a cumulative grade second semester. So 80% is your cumulative grade, 20% would be the semester test. And while everybody's taking the first semester final, if you notice right here, it mentions that students who take the AP test and have a B average or better for the year, in other words, B or better first semester, B or better second semester, you don't have to take the second semester final. You can choose to exempt out of it. Now, with homework, I'd mentioned that this is a part of your grade that you have direct control over, and this should always be a high A+. Plus. Well, that's because daily assignments, which are a critical part of AP Chemistry, so almost every day there's going to be something you're working towards, and I do it as a daily basis rather than to make it all due towards the end of the chapter, um, because I find when I do that, most people end up cramming. And I'd really much have rather have you work on a continual basis, slowly getting through the material. Your retention and understanding will be much better. So we do daily homework. But the daily work is really a five-point completion grade. You'll, you'll, uh, when you finish your homework, we'll go through it the next day. And every single day, we will go through your homework. So you'll always see the answers and have a chance to ask questions about it. So daily homework, it's always going to be reviewed, collected, and it'll be graded for completion for five points. Now, the only other aspect of your homework grade would be larger homework assignments and chapter reviews. Chapter reviews are typically where the rest of your homework points come from, and that's really exactly as it says. It's a review of the material from the chapter to help prepare you for the test. And we also do practice FRQs in each chapter for that, for the free response portion of the AP test. Those chapter reviews are, are worth much more than five points, typically 20 to 25 points. We correct them in class for actual points, 
and your homework that night is to fix anything you have wrong. So you redo any problem that you got wrong, showing all work. So if it's a math problem, you completely redo the math problem. If it's a concept question, you explain why this is the right answer. And you can earn back all those points. So that should always be a part of your review to get ready for the test, is correcting and redoing your chapter review. So between those two things, you're either automatically getting 100% because you're completing it each time, or you're doing your corrections and getting 100%. So your homework grade really should never be less than a high A. One of the components that's a really important part of this class is learning to use your textbook. When you get to college, it's going to be one of the resources you have that you always have with you. And college professors often rely on the fact that you're going to be doing a lot of outside study reading the textbook. Now, while this is kind of a transition class, it's a mix, it still really is important that you stay current with the textbook, read through the sections, skim through the sections, make sure you're looking at the sample problems and so forth. Um, most of my students, uh, when the year is done, three quarters of them will say, you know, I really wish that I had spent more time using the textbook. Um, that's a common core when all said and done. Don't be one of those 75%. Be one of the 25% that, you know, uses it continuously and because that's probably in the A range. Next thing I want to mention here is study groups. Um, study groups is not for homework. When you're getting ready for a test, it's often a great idea to get a small core group together to do a common study for those tests. Homework really should be individual. And I know from time to time you think, OK, if I have a question, I'm going to go ask you know, a fellow student. The problem with that is, more often than not, what you end up doing is seeing what they have and writing it down. Doesn't necessarily mean understanding, but it almost always means a form of copying. If you have a problem, use your resources, and then come in and see me. I can make sure you truly get all aspects of the problem, rather than just quickly looking at what somebody else has and thinking you understand it. Um, so study groups are really more for preparing for tests. Learn to use them. They'll be valuable in college. Late work. Um, our normal homework is five points apiece for a completion grade. Well, you lose two points every single day that something is late. Um, and basically, I'll usually give you at least one point in a late homework assignment if it's a couple days late, as long as you get it in before the test. Um, but after the test, at that point, it becomes um, not as useful to you in preparation for the test. Uh, so as long as it's in before the test, I'll always give you some points for homework. One exception to the two point per day is when you've got labs, it's a letter grade a day. It's a 10% reduction on the lab, so make sure you get those things in. AP resources, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. And since we're to uh, uh, the rest of the syllabus, which I'll pass out on the first day, gets into the AP exam format, which we'll talk about later, and it gets into really what we're going to be doing through the course of the year. But at this point, I don't really want to get into that. But I did want to take the time. One of the most valuable resources you're going to use is this School Notes page. Go to School Notes. Oops. There, I can link to it. You need to get in the habit of going to School Notes and using it on a routine basis. So if you enter that link, you'll go to my uh, general front page for my school notes pages. Since we're looking at AP Chemistry here, you'll click on the AP Chemistry link, and you can see basically what my school note page looks like here. So at the top, there's some contact information. You can always email me by clicking on the contact Brian Brown. Then it gets into general discussion. There's some things in here I'm going to want to look at. This is some general intro stuff at the beginning. It has uh, the assignments on a daily basis that you should be doing. So if you're not sure what it said on the board, you didn't write it down, you can always check on school notes. Down at the bottom, it has some favorite links, which we'll be looking at, some flashcards. I've got the I and Quitch quiz stuff in there right now. Usually there's not much there of any use. And then the downloads, which will be very important, just like the favorite links are. Now if I bounce back up to the top here, one of the things you need to learn how to use, and these are almost always accessible through my School Notes page or a link that you can get to off the School Notes page, would be things like the objective sheets, the core reviews, the chapter reds, which I briefly talked to you about, um, and other assignments like chapter reviews and the lab sheets and so forth. Um, objective sheets, this is exactly what it sounds like. It's the objectives for the chapter. It's me telling you what I think is valuable and what you need to know for the test. Um, I always passed out that out the first day of the chapter along with the chapter notes. The 
Um, other thing that is available, um, not handed out, but post online, which I strongly, strongly encourage you to use, is the core review sheets. This is my mini cheat sheet for the test. Um, it's posted on School Notes the first day of every chapter. Print it out, use it. It's a great review for the test. It's an even better review for the final and a great review for the AP test. So print out every single core review for every chapter test or every test we take, because sometimes the tests are over multiple chapters. Chapter Reds, I talked about this. This is a really valuable tool with your homework. If you're working on question number 58 and you see question number 57 is the same kind of question and it has a red number, if you go into the chapter red and download that and I'll explain that and show you that in a second here under the notes and worksheet section. You can actually see the complete solution for question number 57, which will help you do question number 58. Now, how do you get to what I just talked about, these links? If it's not listed at the bottom here under your download, so you'll notice the core review is already there, the notes and the objectives for all three chapters, um, the handouts I've passed out to you as well as the syllabus, all those are accessible here through the downloads. Uh, but if it's not there, or I've run out of space on school notes because I've got a limited amount of space I can put, it's going to be in the notes, worksheets, and other stuff. So if you click on that link, that's going to take you to a part of the school's website called Mr. Brown's Chemistry Pages. And if you want to get into AP Chemistry, don't click on the AP Chemistry folder, click on the plus. And when you click on the plus, basically it opens up what's inside that folder. And there's a bunch of different things in there, including all the chapters we're going to be looking at through the course of the year. Now we're looking at the chapter one through three stuff. You'll notice that there is a one in parentheses there. That means at this point, this chapter folder does contain, if I click on this folder, it does contain information. That's probably the core review. So if, oh, come on. Oh, I've got to get rid of the ink layer here. Now I can click on it. And you'll see it's got the chapter core review in it. So if it's already offline and you wanted to go back and get a copy of that, you can get that here. Now if I push on Document Manager, it'll take me back to the home page here. So I'm looking in the chapter 1 through 3 again. If I click on the plus, because that plus means there's folders within this folder. If I click on that, that's where the individual chapter folders are. So you can see there's two things in chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. Those two things, if I clicked on that folder, those would be the objectives as well as, um, at this point, the uh, the notes would be in there. Those are the only two things. Uh, once I post movies, uh, the movies for the chapters, I always throw them in their chapter folder as well. So there will be some other things that will be accumulating in there. So if it's something that you need to get access to and it says you need to go to the document manager site, that's how you do it. Click on the link for notes, worksheets, and other stuff, and that will get you to information um, that's actually a part of the school's website. Although you can't click to it through the school's website, you got to come through um, this link on my school notes page to get there. Online textbook. Another thing I wanted to briefly mention, if you click on this, it'll take you to a page to enter a code. Now, don't forget to copy the code that was in the uh, where the link was at. So when you come here, you can just paste into the enter code. Be careful if you cut and paste. Make sure you don't have an extra hanging space at the end um, because that's going to try and enter that as part of the code and it's not going to work. So if it doesn't work, you probably cut and pasted too much. Once you enter uh, the code, you'll end up setting up an account. And if I jump into, here's my 11th edition. Um, I've already set up my account, so when I go in in the future, I always come to this login page. So bookmark it so you get back to here once you've been in the book once. And for me, my login is my school email address. And then I've got my password. Oops. And now when I click on login, it takes me to an online version of the textbook. Now, first you have to select a chapter. So since we're looking at the very beginning, I'd select chapter one and click on go. And it gives me basically the general introduction to what are in the sections from chapter one. If I click on here into the ebook, I can actually get into and read uh, chapter one as well as getting access to the homework questions at the end of the chapter. So basically it's an online version of the book. 
So clicking on here, I don't really necessarily need my textbook at home all the time. You can always access it through this. Another thing that I want to mention that's extremely useful here is in preparation for a test, there's this practice quiz over in the left margin and additional practice questions. The practice quiz is a guided quiz that takes you through core ideas from the chapter. So you can use this as a practice to help get ready for a test. Usually it's relatively short, somewhere around 15 to 25 questions, and each one has a hint that you can click on to help you. And then once you've gone through and taken the quiz, you can click on uh, submit your answers for grading. It'll tell you what you did right and wrong. So you can use that as a study guide. Additional practice problems is really just more of the same. There's typically up to an additional uh, 20 to 40 other questions that also help you practice. In this case, there's 15 or 49 of them. So these two things are great ways for you to take a practice test to help get ready for my test. So besides getting a copy of the online book through the e-book here, um, there's also some stuff that you can use to help practice for the test. And anytime, uh, and here is the code that I was talking about. So be careful when you cut and paste this that you're just getting that code. Um, Khan Academy, that's another link. I, I throw different links up throughout the course of the year for different things. This one is uh, a link through to a whole host of, of uh, chemistry help videos, basically. And when I'm posting a video for a curtain chapter, it'll under, be under favorite links here as well. So that's an easy way to get to it. So all these things are basically on the School Notes website. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out here is in this homework section, um, brackets basically show the due date for any particular assignment. So if it's an assignment that's due, you'll see brackets past it. So um, you'll notice the very first assignment here is going to be due on 824. So the second day of school is when that chapter one assignment is going to be due. Parentheses, um, those are after uh, the PowerPoint. They usually tell you what PowerPoint slides my movie is dealing with from the chapter. And I'll also typically put the time for the movie. So that's something that you can help budget time. You can say, okay, this movie is going to take seven minutes. This movie is going to take 15 minutes uh, for a different chapter. So all that is um, on the school notes portion of the page here. Now, that takes care of what I wanted to look at from the syllabus. The next idea that I wanted to cover with you um, was just a few reminders from that welcome sheet I passed out. So if I link on here, that takes me to the video, uh, or I should say that takes me to the, uh, the worksheet that I passed on that very first Friday. And don't forget this includes key information about what the homework is. You can download this again on School Notes if you've lost this sheet. So that's all there, as well as reminders about what test is being hit when. And beneath that, it as a reminder, what do you have to know to do the solubility test? This is going to be the trickiest. So of the four tests that you take, this is the very low point one. And we'll be do, uh, doing the solubility test many times in first semester. Um, strong acids and bases, that was a part memorization for honors chemistry. So that's something hopefully you're prepared for an easy test there. And then the two full point tests, so these will be worth normal test grades each, would be the element quiz, which should be easy to get an A plus on that, as well as the ion test. Um, another thing you've already done before, this should be easy to get an A plus on that. Those are going to be over the first two days. And then day three is, like I said, this tricky one over solubility rules. Study this because it is a partial test grade, so you can do the best you can. Uh, but that's going to be the trickiest of the four. And then the strong acids and bases, and that's another one that you should be able to ace. So those are the things I wanted to remind you that were in the worksheet that we looked at. Now to finish up, just a quick reminder, what you should be doing over the summer to help make your transition easier at the beginning of the year and smoother and quicker is one, watch this movie. Two, you want to download the objectives and note sheet. The objective sheet looks like this. It's exactly what I'd mentioned earlier. It's telling you exactly what you're supposed to know and what I based the test on, as well as the, the note sheet. Now, normally you'll get these notes from me first day, and there'll be blanks in them, because uh, when you're doing notes, you're really just filling in the blank. I don't want to waste a bunch of time writing stuff, but I do want you to key on uh, in on certain information as well as do the practice problems that we do in notes. But what you'll notice for this one is everything is complete. So I'm really giving you the complete set of notes over the first three chapters. So print both of those out and staple them together. And then watch the chapter one, two, and three movies. And you can link to that through school notes. Um, or you can go into the document manager and get it, but it's quicker through school notes. And then you're also going to be downloading the chapter one through three core review. Remember, I mentioned that this was a 
short cheat sheet of ideas for each test. So the first test we're going to take is over the first three chapters. So this goes through in short and reviews some of the key ideas. So it's a really useful um, document to have for preparing for test as well as preparing for finals in the AP test. So that's something that you definitely need to download every single chapter. And remember this summer, if you have any questions, I try and stay in contact uh, with my school email over the summer. I check it hopefully at least once a week when I'm not out of town. So if you do have a question or want to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me at bbrown at hananiga.org. And remember through school notes, you can also get a hold of me there. Well, I hope you have a great summer and look forward to seeing you all next year.